Today I have with me special guest speaker, Dr. Angela Mulrooney, retired dentist, becomes social media marketing guru for dental practices. Today we're going to be going over some pressing questions that dental practices have on how to implement social media marketing for their practices. Hi everyone, thanks for being here today. I have a special guest, her name is Dr. Angela Mulrooney and she has quite a unique story to tell us. So why don't you introduce yourself, Angela, and thank you so much for accepting uh, this interview today. My pleasure. So um, my background is I used to be a practicing dentist and I built this amazing practice in the worst part of town with high level skills where I was actually a referral based practice for a lot of other general dentists even though I was a general dentist. And I was doing a lot of marketing back then, radio advertising, paper advertising, everything to get our name out there. And we created a brand that was quite memorable because we made fun of how ridiculous it was to be afraid of the dentist because we catered to cowards. And then unfortunately, I ended up with a career sustaining injury that spiraled my life out of control into a completely new direction. And it honestly took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up again, because I thought I already had that figured out years ago. And so I spent a lot of time kind of searching what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And it came down to, I want to help other dentists to be able to have an easier time in practice and not go through some of the major stumbling blocks that I went through in my practice, like going through a lawsuit, having difficulties with the purchase of the practice, um, going through the global financial crisis and, you know, be afraid I was going to lose the practice. So there was a lot of interesting lessons I learned on the pathway to ending up losing my career. And I figured that would probably be useful for other people as well. Correct. So right now you have been, you've become quite a social media guru um, ever since your story, let's say, and you've actually been training um, dental teams across Canada and across other cities in North America. Um, you've been pro providing some really good insights and, and, and courses and whatnot. So I thought that maybe you could give us some insights into some of those things that you've been training uh, dental teams, right? Um, so I wanted to go over some five questions uh, today with you to, to sort of pick your brain, if I may. Absolutely. Um, question number one is, do dental practices really need social media? What's your take on that? My take on it is that is actually one of the most important things you can be doing if you're doing it well. Correct. A lot of practices right now, I would say, are not doing it well. One practice looks like the next practice looks like the next practice, and they're not figuring out what is unique about them and actually putting that forth on their social media. Okay. So dental practices should be doing social media, but they need to be unique about creating their own social media and maybe like their own branding or positioning in the market is what I'm hearing you say. Yes. Well, when I look, when I do consults with dental practices, what I find for the most part is I don't even know if they can do dentistry based on their social media. Right. Like they have, they're posting pictures of their food or their team and all this stuff. And I'm, and it, I don't know if they have any expertise out of what they learned at university before they graduated. I don't know what they're passionate about. I have no idea what their philosophy and practices. I just find there's a whole bunch of social pictures up that don't paint a picture of what they're really about. Right, right. So we've also seen that from, from our side and that's why we always say you need to have a strategy before you jump right into tactics because otherwise everything is going to look, it's just not going to align. Things are not going to make sense if you just jump into let's just start posting and let's see what, what happens, right? So maybe that's a good segue into our next um, question. What's the process for a dental practice to build a brand? What are your suggestions for a dental practice? Well, they need to figure out what they're about. Like, who are they trying to target? What do they love doing in their practice? What are the strong, the strengths of their team and the dentist? Um, and be able to start putting that forth in a package that they can present to the community. Because if someone is coming to you as a practice, if you just want to be jack of all trades, fine you are going to be a specialist to nobody. But if you can actually figure out what your niche is, and you can still be practicing very general dentistry, but if you have a niche that you're very passionate about and you excel at relative to other people in your competitive area, that's where you're gonna really start being able to figure out what your brand is and start 
pushing that forward. And it doesn't mean that you don't do everything else, but if you can focus on something that is unique about you, whether it's your skill set, um, whether it's the passion that surrounds that skill set, that's what they need to start putting forth in order to start separating themselves from the competition. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Um, have you been able to, in your experience, seen how social media has impacted the, let's say, the bottom line, really, of different clinics? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When someone has something unique that they offer, let's say it's cosmetic dentistry, smile makeovers, or implants, if you can actually put forth what you're passionate about, I've seen people add six figures minimum to their bottom line in a year simply by leveraging their social media. And it's... Yeah, it adds in a different way than their website ever could because a website is like a snapshot of one point in time and it's a perfect snapshot. Yes. Social media is imperfect and it's real and raw. It's kind of like watching reality television. Right. So people like that because they feel like they actually get to know you. On your website, even if you've put a video of you talking about your practice, again, that was at one point in time. Whereas if we can dynamically be showing you along the way, along your journey, and having that imperfect journey that people can be watching, that's a way better way for people to actually get to know your practice and start to want to come to your practice. And then when they actually arrive there, if you are the same as how you presented yourself on social media, it's game over. They're going to want to be your patient forever. Absolutely. Do you have some tips on maybe what to do and what not to do on social media? Figure out a strategy of what you want to do. So what I recommend is a mix of different kinds of posts. So we want to have the professional posts, we want to have fun posts, and we want to have personal posts. If you go all in one direction, things get pretty boring. So having a mix of say eight professional to one fun to one personal is a good way to mix it up. And figure out an aesthetic. If it's just helter skelter and there's all these different kinds of photos, different kinds of lightings, different kinds of filters, it's really hard for people to identify that that photo if they were in a pile of other photos belongs to your practice. Right. But if you have an aesthetic that is consistent, then suddenly when they're screen, scrolling through the feed, they're going to recognize, oh, that must be that practice because we've seen that kind of aesthetic. And they won't be able to say those words, but in their mind, they can start associating that kind of look with your practice. Absolutely. So that brand consistency has to be shown through your social media posts pretty much. Okay. So um, here's another question for you. How does a dental practice build an audience online? They need to figure out who they want to target. Okay, so target audience. Target first. audience. So again, you can't be trying to attract everyone. This is what I see often. Um, like in Calgary, we still, there's still people doing paper advertising. So you get like a, a flyer in the mailbox. Yeah. And this is always like the best example of what not to do. Because a lot of times, like on the front, I'll see a picture of a kid with braces. Hmm. Then I open it up and there's an old person. And then there's little kids. And then on the back, there's a night guard. And they're tr what they're trying to do is hit everyone and be like, hopefully something that we put out there appeals to someone. Right. And I see the same tactic when people look at their websites, they're looking at their social media, they're trying to hit everyone. And it's, n it's not a good uh, way to go at all. So they need to figure out who they actually want to target. They need to figure out everything about those people, what they like, what age range they are. Are they married? Are they single? Are they people who are involved in group sports or are they people who follow certain celebrities? So any kind of information they can gather about the people that they would like to be working with, that's who, what they need to do first. They need to do a whole bunch of research about that 20% of their population that they love working with mm -hmm. and then start finding people who are like that to stack their audience with on their social media. Okay, so amazing. So step one is really hone down on your target audience, understand your ideal patient avatar, let's say, but really get to know them, where they hang out online, everything else that you need to know about that patient, right? So that's how you could start, let's say, building an online um, audience, right? So hone down on your target audience. Yes. And one thing that you mentioned there is really important. Once you know who those people are, then you need to figure out which platforms they actually are liking, because it's really hard to master a whole bunch of platforms, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to run a dental practice. So if you can figure out, you know, majority of my audience is probably on Instagram or they're on LinkedIn or they're on Facebook, go with that one first and really try and figure out the platform or hire a company like ours to do that for you so that you can get fast wins. Because if you're, again, it's like trying to be a jack of all trades. If you're trying to do everything 
and you're not doing a great job on any of it, you're going to get lost in the minutia. Absolutely. Um, what do you have to say about specialists who are trying to target dentists? They have a much easier time. Because <laughs> <laughs> dentists typically have practices that um, have social media accounts. So it's actually pretty easy to find those people. It's easier to find that than the general public, I find. So what's your take on, for example, where are uh, dentists hanging out the most online? Is it LinkedIn? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it Twitter? What's your take on that one? I would say a lot of practices are putting stuff on Instagram, whether they're really integrate, uh, whether they're interacting a lot there is, it's hit and miss depending on the group of dentists that you're targeting. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to be hanging out because LinkedIn is a place where you've got really high level professionals and people are there for business. So they're not there to see the fluff. They want to see the meat of what you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and Facebook is a good place to be as well because there's a lot of people on there. It's just really hard to get attention for your brand on Facebook. You have to be doing a lot of different tactics to make that one work. So I would say pick between the Instagram and the LinkedIn, but I always find LinkedIn is one of your fastest wins because a lot of people aren't willing to actually put themselves out there and put their knowledge forth on a platform that's full of smarty pants. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what are your tips on increasing engagement for social media in general? It's a two way street. So if you expect to put something out there and just have everyone rushing to you with accolades, it's not going to happen. Right. So if you can be generous with liking other people's stuff, commenting on their stuff and really interacting and actually helping push their stuff forward, that's when you're going to start having people come and start supporting what you're actually doing and wanting to engage with you. But you have to, you have to be the one doing it first. Don't expect people just to come to you. Okay. So I have a question um, about around, I guess, engagement. So some posts, one would argue that are necessary because they're more educational posts and you just, you need to have them so that patients understand what kind of treatments you provide. They're not fun. They're not, or super fun or funny, but they're needed, right? So maybe I'm talking about an, an explanatory post around dental implants. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a lot of engagement around that, but they are educational, right? Um, what how you present it, right? So you can make things very like straight laced and boring and like monotone, or you can make it exciting and show what you actually really love doing. That's going to draw people in. Even if you're talking, even if you're doing the same script between two dentists, how they present it is going to change the engagement with it. Perfect. Okay. Um, and next question is, I think, which is a question that everyone has, how long until efforts will turn into production? So it takes a little while to get things tuned in. So if you think about like SEO tactics, you got to think about your social media the same way. And most people are not going to hit it out of the park in the first three months. Those first three months are measuring what is actually working. And from one practice to another, it's not identical. So I could use the exact same tactic on two different practices that I'm doing their social media and I'm going to get different results. So you actually have to pay attention to what's happening behind the scenes as far as the analytics go, because the analytics is the science behind social media. So there's an art and a science to what you're doing. The art is figuring out like the aesthetic and all that kind of stuff, but there's science behind it that will tell you this works, this doesn't work. I need to do more of this and I need to do less of this. Right. So what I, I'm hearing you say a bit is you need to be on top of your analytics, be able to report. Don't think that in the first, at least semester, almost at least four months, you're going to right away start seeing results, right? But be able to look at your, at your reporting and your metrics and see if you need to pivot maybe. Absolutely. Okay. And sometimes people will start getting results right away. Like we've had clinics where we start working with them and they're getting five new patient requests a week right off the bat. And then there's other ones where their market is a little bit more finicky or maybe there's more people on social media. So the audience is more distracted. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little while to actually get that tuned up and get their social media machine working really well so that by six months we have it really zoned in as to what we need to be doing. And then we can move forward quite easily and wrap things up really well. Gotcha. You mentioned something which I think is interesting. How do you track new patients? How do you do that with the, with the practice itself? Right. That so come, that come from social media and not, you know, allotted to something else. 
Right. And th that's a tricky thing because we can be seeing how many clicks, um, how many times people are going and clicking on the website link on your social media, but they may come in and report, well, I got it. I was looking on Google. Right. There's a whole bunch of online tactics that they're probably getting hit with before they actually make a phone call. It's not just that first one that suddenly they're appearing at your practice. More likely they've done a little bit of research and they're going to tell you the last thing that they saw is how they came to your practice. So you have to take the patient reporting of where they came from with a little bit of a grain of salt, but um, you can also be looking at those analytics behind the scenes to see the click rate, to see how many people actually visited your website. And then if you're doing, if, for example, paid advertising, which is not um, what I do, I have someone in my um, company who does that for me, but I focus on the organic stuff. So the organic stuff is a little bit harder to measure because what you're doing is you're creating a presence and starting to create that expert status Right. Not just um, trying to like instantly get patients into the practice. So it's right. a little bit a uh, different game. Correct. Yeah. It's that also that combination between paid and organic that I think is going to provide you results in the long run. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the paid stuff, you're going to get more of those instant results. But if you are just doing paid advertising and they check out your organic stuff and your organic is weak, that's actually going to hurt you. So right. you want to make sure you're playing both games really well, but I do suggest you start with the organic stuff first and get that built out strong before mm -hmm. you start jumping into advertising so that you're, you've got the, the ground prepared properly. You've got a good foundation before you start building anything else on top of it. Awesome. Do you have any other tips that you want to share with us right now? Don't just assign it to the youngest person in the practice oh, because you think you're the social media savvy one. Um, that's, honestly, one of the worst things you can do unless they've actually started to train in social media. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times they're just posting what they like and they have no idea what the audience likes or what the analytics are saying. So if you're going to be doing it, take, take a course on it at least. And it, this is something that shouldn't just be like the last thing out of the week that you do. This is something there has to be a strategy. You have to be putting work into it on a daily basis in order for it to work out really well. I'm so glad you just said that because that's one of the biggest mistakes, recurring mistakes that we see our clients say all the time. You know, they say, well, I want the youngest person on my team, AKA the millennial <laughs> to be our social media officer or our social media guru. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's often a mistake because it doesn't mean because that person is young knows exactly what your brand voice should be on social media. Exactly. Nor do they know, do, do they have a plan? Do they know how paid campaigns work? Have they thought out the target audience, et cetera? So as you said, it's a matter more, it's not so much about age. It's about, it's about have they received the proper training for social media and do they have a plan? Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And if you're just trying to assign it to someone who already has a full-time job in the clinic, it's not going to work out very well. That's why a lot of people will hire a company like ours so that it is being done properly. Because it is, it's not just a fluffy tactic that you just try it once in a while. If you're going to do social media well, you need to have really experts behind it who are navigating it for you and just getting you to give the content that is needed in order to take your, your social media accounts to the next level. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Where can people get more information about you? So if they're looking for social media, they can go to our website, www.unleashinginfluence.com, or they can send my assistant, Domini, an email at info at unleashinginfluence.com. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Great to see you. Same here. I hope you liked that interview with Dr. Angela Mulrooney. I thought she gave us some really good insights. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. As always, make sure to like and share this video if you found it useful or valuable for your own dental practice. I will see you next time, same time, same place. Bye.